I spent the last two years of my life making 2D games with Unreal Engine and educating viewers about the process. However, one topic I still haven't touched upon so far is Pixel Perfect 2D. To achieve pixel perfection and that retro look from games in the 80s and 90s, there are a couple of techniques we can utilize. I'm gonna give you a full breakdown of what pixel perfection even means and how we can easily implement it in Unreal Engine 5. So stick around to find out all about it. Before that, I quickly want to tell you about my Ultimate Unreal Engine 2D game development course. This 12-hour course will teach you all you need to know about making 2D and 2D 3D hybrid games with Unreal Engine 5. It already has over 3000 students and an overwhelmingly positive rating. We'll create 4 unique games of different genres that teach you all you need to know to start working on your own dream game. You'll learn all about sprites, flipbooks, tile maps, 2D combat, how to mix 2D sprites with 3D backgrounds, some metroidvania mechanics and much more. The special link in the description will give you a discount. So please check out the course. First, we need to gain a better understanding of what pixel perfect even means and what benefits we get by using it in our games. In retro games, a sprite could only move in units of at least one pixel. This would cause an effect of the sprite snapping to the next unit on the grid whenever you move. Now, there were some techniques of using subpixels behind the scenes to calculate the player position more smoothly, but the visual part of the sprite would only update if it reaches the next pixel threshold on the grid. And even though this was due to hardware limitations at the time, it is now something we fondly associate with retro games and might want to replicate in our games even today. Nowadays, most game engines use their own system of units for distance and velocity, and in the case of Unreal Engine, one Unreal Engine unit is 1 cm or 0.03 feet. And since it's also possible to move a sprite by fractions of one unit, this allows for really smooth movement. However, in a lot of cases, not having pixel snapping can feel very weird, because you'll end up with a mismatch between the pixels on your character and other objects, and you'll have situations where you can see half or quarter of a pixel. You might also get pixel flippering or warping, which does not look good either. Your players might not be able to exactly point their finger on what's wrong, but they'll be able to feel that something is off with your game. I actually created a pixel perfect plugin and two sample projects applying these techniques, which you can get as a patron. This will make it easier for you to reuse in multiple projects and you can also gain a better understanding of how it works in different situations by looking at the samples. But let's now get into implementing pixel perfect 2D from scratch. If you already have your own 2D project, you can just follow along using that, but otherwise I recommend that you get my free 2D sites for a template from GitHub, since I'll also be using that as my starting point. The issue we have right now might not be instantly apparent, but we have a problem with the pixels not aligning correctly. We can have situations where maybe the grass only overlaps half a pixel of our character and things like that which just don't look nice. To fix that, there are basically two different aspects we have to update. The material and the camera. But both of these rely on us already having figured out our pixel per unit setting. Like I said before, one Unreal Engine unit is 1 cm and by default the pixel per units are also set to 1. This means that if you have a character that is 20 pixels tall like our fox, this equates to 20 cm or around 0.65 feet, which is very small and will cause issues with the settings on the character movement component, because it assumes our character is of a reasonable height. The pixel per unit settings basically allow us to multiply the size of our sprites. You can check the setting on every sprite, but it can also be set in the project settings and will apply to all sprites we import after that. So if you want to update it on already imported sprites, you'll have to use the bulk edit tool. Anyway, if you're using my template, the pixel per unit setting is 0.25 and that is actually a decent starting point. With 0.25, we will basically multiply the size of the sprite by 4. This means our fox is now 80 centimeters or 2.6 feet tall. This is still very small and about the size of a small baby, but it is inside a reasonable range for a chibi style character like this. And Unreal Engine's physics won't freak out on us. So take a note of the pixel per unit setting of 0. 0.25 or whatever you're using in your game because we'll need this value for the snapping of our material and camera. Next up is creating the material. I want to give a big shout out to Ludicrous Games, Naja and UE5 2D who put out blog posts and sample projects about this which really helped me with my research. So thank you very much. Now we want to create a copy of the material our character is using. The easiest way to find it is to just open up the blueprint of your character and under the sprite we can see the materials here. And you can just click on the folder to open it up in the folder. This is a material instance though, and it is based on the default sprite material, which is the one we really want to copy. You can just right click this and duplicate. And we're going to call it M underscore unlit pixel perfect material. And since this is now in the plugins folder, we want to scroll all the way up to the content folder. And we can just drag it out here and move here. 
Now just double click to open it up. The thing we want to use here is the world position offset. This is going to allow us to snap the material or the character to a grid. First, let's start out here by holding one on the keyboard and left clicking to create a constant value. And here we want to use our pixel per unit setting. In my case, it is 0.25. And we can just uh, click on C to create a comment and say pixel per unit. So we don't forget. The next thing we need is the world position. So we can just look for world position and this is gonna give us the absolute world position. We then need to multiply our pixel per unit by this. So we can just drag off here, multiply and plug the X, Y, Z in here. We then want to add 0.5 to this and floor the result of that. We then take this and divide it by our pixel per unit value. And here you can just double click to create some reroute nodes like this. Next, we take this and subtract it by this XYZ value of our world position. And what we do now changes slightly depending on if it's a side scroller or a top down game. So this will give us a vector three, but we only want to get the X and the Z axis. So we can use a mask here, a component mask, and we just want the R, which is gonna be the X in the case of a location. And we can copy paste this, control C, control V. And for this one, we only want to get the Z, which is B in this case. And we can then just make a float three like this. And yeah, plug in the X and the Z. And this will then need to be moved over. And we can simply plug this into the world position, world position offset. And if this was a top-down game, you would use the mask G and put it into the Y and just ignore the Z. And yeah, there's a lot of complicated math going on here. But all it does in the end is it takes our sprite and snaps it to a grid. So what is being displayed on the screen can only move in units of one pixel. Now we can just hit apply and save. And we want to create a material instance of this. So just right click and create material instance. And the convention is to call it the same, but I am. So I am unlit pixel perfect material. And we just create an instance for convenience and it's easier for Unreal Engine to process. And this is the one we're actually going to use on our character now. So in the BP side scroll character, or whatever your character is called, on the sprite, we just select this material now. So the MI underscore unlit pixel perfect material. On first glance, not much has changed, but let's check it out. So back in the map, we now also want to apply this to our tile map or whatever you're using in your level. So on the tile map, we can also just go here to the material and look for the MI unlit pixel perfect material. And again, it doesn't really look like anything has changed on first glance, but let's check it out from close up. And now you can see that the character moves in different units. You can see that we can snap by a full pixel, but it's still not perfect. There are still a couple of steps we have to do to perfectly align everything. Another problem you might notice is that you can see some jittering of the sprite when we walk around. And this happens because the camera is still not on the same grid as the pixels of the material. And another issue is that the pixel size of our character and foreground still doesn't match the ones in the background. So there's still a couple of steps we have to go through. The next step is to switch from a perspective camera to an orthographic camera. And the orthographic camera used to be very buggy, but there have been a couple of updates with Unreal Engine 5.3. So I think from now on it's a lot safer to use it and it is necessary for the pixel perfect look. So on your character, just go to the camera or if you have a camera manager, do it there and go from perspective to orthographic. And the ortho width is how close or far away we are from the character and this is too close. So we can just go in here and times to it. So it is 1024 and check it out. And yeah, this looks like a good distance. However, now it becomes even more apparent that we have issues with our background because the pixels are so huge now. But at this point, you can already see that we have achieved a pixel perfect look between our character and the foreground. Now the pixels between the character and the grass are perfectly aligned and we don't have anything like a half or quarter pixel that is visible. We could of course fix the layer with the trees in between here, 
but for the sake of saving time i'm just going to delete these and only concentrate on the background because this can be a bit of an annoying process so the background is really big now you can see the scale is 10 but we want to bring it back down to one and if you use the pixel perfect system you want to make sure that all of your sprites are scaled to one so you don't have any issues with different pixel sizes between your different sprites and then we can just bring it forward and move it around and I'll hold alt and drag off to create a copy of it a duplicate and align it and here I need to go to snap size 1 to align it perfectly and now you can see that the pixel sizes match between our character and the background but on the background we of course also want to use our material which we created so am I unlit pixel perfect material yeah and you just saw that it kind of snapped upwards a little bit to align and yeah so now everything here is fine our character aligns perfectly with the background and with the foreground so the only issue left now is the camera and the jittering we have when the character moves around of course for the background you probably would want to implement parallax scrolling or something like that but that's a different topic let's take care of the camera snapping to get rid of the jittering in my plugin and samples which i put out on patreon i actually implemented this using c and a camera manager class because we never have to touch it again after the implementation that makes it a little bit easier to reuse there are many layers to setting something like that up though and it would make the video about 30 minutes longer so i want to keep it simple so that everybody can follow along and we'll just implement it directly in the player blueprint in the player blueprint we want to go to the event graph and find the tick event and after doing the update animation set control rotation or whatever you're doing on your character here we just want to right click and get actor location and we want to split the return value which is a vector because we only care about the x and the z for a side scroller and for a top-down game we only care about the x and the y and all we have to do now here is to drag off and snap to grid float which is a nice function that unreal engine already gives us and we need to figure out our grid size the way we can calculate that and this is just a comment we have one and divided by our pixel per unit which in this case is 0.25 so we can just go here one divided by 0.25 which gives us four and now we want to use the same value here for the z so we can just copy paste this and plug the z in here and we now want to get the spring arm set world location and connect this here to fire off on tick and again here we can just right click and split struct pin again for a side scroll we only care about the x and the z and this will basically take the spring arm and snap it on the grid so it's synchronized with the pixels in our material uh, one more thing we want to set though is that the spring arm is attached to the player so it will always try to move together with the player but we want to move it manually so we want to prevent that so on the spring arm we can go to transform and location set this to world and now it's just going to ignore the movement of the player completely and will only be moved by this function here and you can see that I can walk around and it is mostly working the jittering has gotten better but it is still not fixed and you can see that especially when I jump so there are still a couple of steps to this but we're almost done on the character we go to viewport and sprite and the problem here is that the sprite location is not aligned to the grid and I can show you how we can fix this we can just go to location and set it to zero set it to zero here as well and if I go to the game now the jittering is gone completely but now I'm inside of the floor so the problem is not solved really because we also need to align the sprite with the capsule and we can actually use a different value than zero here however it has to be a multiple of our grid size here I had the value of five before and the closest one on the grid size is four and here I had 25 before so the closest one is 24 and we just got to make sure that these values are on the grid one other thing we also need to make sure is that the spring arm follows the same rules so you can see the location is fine but we have the socket offset and this again is 75 which is off the grid 
it again needs to be a multiple of the grid size. And the closest number that is a multiple of four is 76. So we can just use this one to make sure that everything is on the grid that we created. And now I can go back to the game, press on start, and I can walk around, I can jump, the jittering is gone on the character, and we also align perfectly with the sprites in the foreground, but actually we are floating above the ground a little bit. So I believe the value of 20, 24 was not good for the character here. So the next multiple of four is 20. So let's try this. And now you can see we align perfectly with the ground. Our feet are touching it perfectly. And again, just to show with the grass, I think it's the easiest to tell. There is no sub pixel, there's no half pixel or quarter pixel that we can see. The character only moves at full pixels, the camera only moves at full pixels, and so do all of our other elements if we apply this material to them. One more important thing is though that you cannot use camera lag. On the spring arm there is an option called camera lag down here. So if we enable camera lag, this actually breaks everything. And you can see the jittering is back because the camera lag that is built in here does not respect our grid size. So if you need camera lag, you would have to make a custom solution that does respect the size of our grid. And this concludes our Pixel Perfect 2D implementation. Again, if you want the Pixel Perfect plugin and sample projects, you can join the Patreon and get your hands on them right away. And if you want to know all about how to make awesome 2D and 2D 3D hybrid games in Unreal Engine, you can get my course from the discount link in the description. As always, thanks to my amazing patrons who make videos like this possible. 